blokes, you know, that are brave enough to get on the mat, but the ones that do like, you know, once they're on there, I think that's the first step in, um, yeah, you just got to roll it out. G'day and welcome to the Farms Vice podcast with your host, Jack Creswell. Whether you farm it, service it, or just love it, this podcast is for you. We'll bring you the techniques and technologies you can implement into your day straight from the leaders and innovators themselves. Spread the farm's advice so that we can reach more farmers right across Australia. Follow us on all of your socials at Farms Advice and let's get into this episode. Welcome to the Farms Advice podcast. On the Farms Advice podcast, we'd like to start off a little bit healthy into each year. And on this year's healthy start, we've got M from Saltbush Stretch. M, thanks for coming on. No worries. Thanks so much for having me. Great to have you on and um, get a few of those vibes that you throw across the socials. I see you're very vibrant, vibrant in what you do um, from yoga, Pilates to keeping those challenges happening within the agricultural community and everything. How's it all going? How is Saltbush Stretch? Yeah, well, um, yeah, as you said, it is a online platform for yoga, Pilates and a little bit of mindfulness thrown in there. Um, yep. So, yeah, basically I have women and a few men um, uh, that are connected from all points of Australia, a few um, internationals actually of late, which is pretty exciting. Um, So basically, yeah, all of my flows basically and my ethos and what I'm all about is basically just trying to inspire women and men in the bush to find movement in their everyday lives and you know, I'm from the land, so I grew up at Gumba, which is in between Hay and Gulgawi on the Midwestern Highway um, in the Riverina, now at Carathal, which isn't that far um, from there. So, you know, I um, obviously now live on the land and, you know, it, it has its challenges at times and uh, I not only for myself you know, it's a great outlet for me to release a bit of steam and have that time for me. But also, um, you know, I just think that it's great to be able to have, you know, we don't have the resources and accessibility to be able to go to a physical class, um, you know, like in the bush. So for me to be able to bring that to people's living rooms and decks and lawns and, you know, to be able to get um, that happening, like I'm pretty passionate about it. And it's not fancy, you know, I think everyone thinks that it's glamorous and it's, you know, in the crazy, you know, all the kit and everything. But to be honest, like, I just want to inspire as many people as I can to just move their bodies. And my husband, I've finally convinced him, you know, on the mat, it's taken a little while, but um, I think for him, like, I don't know, especially when he's bouncing around on the tractor all day, like he's leaning over on the back, looking at the the disc or the rig or whatever he's looking at. And, you know, he's, he comes in and he looks like a half open pocket knife, you know, and I'm like, come on, let's, let's get on the mat and do something. So yeah, I finally got him there and you know, it's 15 minutes, like 10, 15 minutes. And, you know, I think there's this perception of, you know, to have to do it, you've got to do a 45 minute or an hour to, you know, feel good and tick the box and whatever. But, you know, my mindset is a little bit is better than nothing. And uh, you know, especially for the blokes, like, you know, you come in after a big day and you just want to sit on the couch and have a beer and have a bit of a relax. But, you know, I've worked on home and I've said, you know, 10 minutes we put out, we've got a little boy and we put him to bed and then we roll out the mats and just do, you know, five or 10. And even if it's five minutes and, you know, sometimes even if he just lies there just to stretch out, like after being bouncing around all day or on a motorbike or, you know, something, um, I think something in my books always better than nothing, whatever, you know, that might look like. Yeah. I found like just even lying on the floor and having a quick stretch can really sort of open you up after you've been coped up in, cooped up into it, like track, tractor cable or something like that. So salt bush, how did it all start? When did it start for you? Yep. Yep. So basically I was, so I lived in Sydney for three years before I moved back to the farm and I was into it when I was there. And then when I transitioned to the farm, like I didn't really obviously have the accessibility to be able to drive a hundred Ks 
you know, to go to the physical classes that were available within my area. So I started doing it just for myself. Um, and then, yeah, I started my Instagram page and I started doing, so I did my yoga teacher training in 2018. 18 maybe 2017 oh that's bad um but yeah I think it was 2018 um so I did my yoga teacher training then and then I started off with just a few local physical classes and that kind of just got me started and got a little bit of my confidence up and then it was actually just such crazy timing um so I just wanted to I don't know diversify a little bit be a little bit different so about three months before COVID hit I went online, which timing could not have been more spot on. So, yeah, I'd already kind of built up a little bit of an online platform before everyone kind of already had to follow suit. So basically then, you know, it went from being like a local thing and for me doing it myself for then literally to just expand to all of these men and women in the bush that also didn't have the accessibility to have it as well so yeah so that um has been uh, yeah a real roller coaster haven't had any like tech as per se like experience before so there's been a lot of youtubing um and like all just self-taught which you know I know that a lot of the blokes that are listening to this also do a lot of their own research and mechanics and all of you know maybe I'm on a bum steer here but you know I know that everyone does a lot of their own research to build and grow and you know etc so yeah there was a few a lot of swear words at times you know trying to understand the website and the tech and the filming and the recording and I probably don't need to tell you that with a podcast but um yeah it has its challenges but and then um yeah so then I had a baby and the physical classes and COVID obviously put a stop to the physical classes. So then I'm kind of, it wasn't on purpose, but then I've kind of just transitioned to basically like a fully online business. So, um, and now with the little fella, obviously, you know, it's harder to get someone to look after him and do all that stuff. So I do, you know, um, two regular classes a week um, in Hay. Um, so yeah, and that's great. Like for that connection kind of piece, like I do love, um, you know, that physical aspect of it. Um, but yeah, like I would say 90% of my business now is fully online. So, and I don't know, it's really cool. I find it really, um, I get really pumped up that I can connect with so many different people from so many nooks and crannies of the country. Like it's, you know, and I think just to also, um, you know, there's a lot of people that are a lot more isolated than what I am and, you know, yeah, I can go to a class that's 100 k's away but some people are 300 k's from yeah. anywhere, you know. So I just feel like, you know, what I'm doing can hopefully just help those people that at whatever different stage of life that they're at can, you know, feel inspired to move in some way um, from home and you don't have to be in the city to be able to have all the access to the studios and the vibes and, you know, all the good stuff. So, yeah. And then in, um, I lost track of your question. Sorry. Um, so then in what year, 2023. So last year I did my Pilates, Matt Pilates teacher training. I just wanted to add a little bit more diversity to my existing clientele Um, and also I had always loved Pilates. So that was kind of like the next step for me. Um, and that's been really, really well received my, um, my brother-in-law to be my sister and her partner, they're engaged. Um, so they're actually at the farm that we grew up on, um, at Gumba, which is awesome to have them close by. And he's a rugby player for the Hay Cutters, um, our local rugby team, great name um so and he yeah he's into the Pilates he's got a bad back and he reckons I don't know he he swears at me a lot because it hurts you know it's hardcore but um yeah they do it together of a night time and I don't know it's just there's not many folks you know that are brave enough to get on the mat but the ones that do like you know once they're on there I think that's the first step in um yeah you just got to roll it out get started somewhere 
Yeah, definitely. I actually have mates that started their own Pilates studio, a franchise in Newcastle. Um, yep. But like before I even thought of it, it was like, no, I'm not going to go to Pilates. That's for the women. Um, but <laughs> I, I went in there and after dead set, I could not feel my ass. Um, I know. I couldn't pick it up off the ground. It it belted me. It was really yep. good. Like, I was so surprised how like overall body that it hit. I just sort of yeah. like it's like a twinkle toe thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for any <laughs> any mates that like um dis Pilates now, I'm like, oh, you should try and let me know on the other side of it. Seriously, seriously, it's it's hardcore. And I I always think um so in like on the online platform, which is called the Saltbush Squad, um yeah. basically there's lots of different variations of you know, different durations of flows from 15 minutes to an hour. And definitely the most popular are from 15 to 20 minutes because, you know, that's people are busy and they want to get something in and still feel like they've, you know, can tick the box. So, um, yeah, so when I do do the 15-minute or 20-minute Pilates, I like to bring the heat so that it's, you know, you're not there for long, but when you are there, we're, we're on. <laughs> Beautiful. And you touched, like you've got Saltbush Squad, you've got Saltbush Mama. Yep, Saltbush Mama. So, um, again, that was kind of an avenue, I guess, that I hadn't really thought about before I had my own child. Um, yeah, I have a, um, yeah, so I basically did my, um, after I had Ted, I did my um, yoga teacher training um, for pre and postnatal. Yep. And, you know, again, the whole accessibility thing, like, yeah. And it is different. It is different when you are pregnant. There's a lot of things you can and can't do, obviously. Um, the growing belly and things are just more challenging. So I also got on board a nutritionist and pelvic floor, um, pelvic women's health, pelvic floor specialist. Um, so I kind of got some other people together to really create an actual whole program for that time. And it's everyone does it differently, you know, but to have that support, you know, and a lot of people that are in the squad, um, you know, they start when they're not pregnant and then they get pregnant and then they want to transition into something that they can do. They don't just want to stop and not be able to do, you know, the hardcore ab workouts when you're six months pregnant. So I think that was just a really good, um, you know, transition for me to be able to keep those people moving during that time and then also be that support person for them, not only during, but in that stage afterwards as well. And I don't know if they're blokes that you'll, you know, are listening to your podcast, like it's got to keep the mama happy and, you know, mind, body and soul. So, um, and living in the land can be tough. And especially with a new little baby, when you're not seeing people all the time, you know, so being able to, have that space and community, you know, within the Saltbush Stretch platform. Um, like I'm really passionate about like that connective piece to keep everyone, um, you know, connected at that time that can be quite isolating. It's pretty cool to be know, to know that you're working out with people from across Australia, but also they, they know the same challenges, the same struggles, that you're all time poor. Yeah. Uh, and like what's going on within agriculture changes day in, day out. You're yeah. wearing a jumper at the moment and it should be mid <laughs> or to harvest going bad, but like bringing it back down and having that 20 minutes to an hour for yourself, for your mind. Yeah. And you mentioned before mindfulness has been a little part of what Saltbush is. What yeah. do you do within the mindfulness game? Um. So I um, know that the industry can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes for people. So my approach definitely is a really scaled back version. So just really within the actual flows that we do with yoga and Pilates, just having that little bit more connection to just like focusing on your breathing within the exercises, but also, you know, at the end of the flow, you know, just having that little bit of calm at the end of the flow, focusing on your breathing a little bit because there's actually not, um, it's not often that we do do that. So um, I like doing it within the flows towards the end 
because it's not as scary and I think people can be a bit overwhelmed by it sometimes. So I um, have meditations and stuff on the platform as well, which are very normal and accessible and, you know, not to, to in quote, woo-woo. Um, but I think, I think um, you know, I, I often think to myself, um, you know, and the everyday people out there, like when was the last time that you lied down on the ground and closed your eyes yeah. and like had a few moments to have a few breaths, you know, like I think, um, yeah, it just doesn't happen. Like maybe unless you're under a tractor and you're closing your eyes because you've got dirt coming in your face or something, but like really you're not like at home or on the lawn, just having a couple of moments, you know, just to, just to breathe. Like, you know, I think it's, um, yeah, so definitely, um, I just like to sprinkle a bit of mindfulness, I say, um, on the on the salt bush community. Um, and you know what? It's not for everyone, and I get that. And that's why I've got the you know separate stuff for the meditation. So if people want to go down that pathway, it's there. But if it's not in your, in, it's, it's if it's not your vibe, well, you know, close your eyes for two minutes. And if you don't want to close your eyes, you can keep them open. So you know, it's um, yeah, it's um, I think um yeah sprinkling sprinkling a little bit um isn't too scary for people that haven't found yeah absolutely and probably introduces them into that sort of realm and also opens you up I imagine to be like comfortable within that environment especially as a bloke um or where like that the as society puts it blokes don't do pilates blokes don't do breath work especially in agriculture and how hardy we must be um, yeah, I've caught myself listening off the back of podcasts, like breath work is becoming more popular, um, yeah. necessarily in ag, but like mustering the bike, I take a couple of deep breaths, like if I'm toggled by it from listening into something and like, I think it does work. It calms you down. And I think, I think feet. also like, and I know there'd be a lot of the blokes that are listening to this would definitely, or, you know, if not, haven't would, or hopefully will, but you know, even in terms of, um, you know, taking it off the mat, like, you know, with um, my husband and I, like we're on his farm and just even in terms of like family succession and that kind of avenue of just really tough conversations and, you know, sometimes you just need to take a breath and like, you know, I feel like when you're going through that like higher level stuff, you know, as a family and just more difficult conversations, like I found that has really helped rather than just like spit something out that maybe not that you regret, but just having that moment just to have a breath and then, you know, have that little bit of calm and then you can talk about those maybe, a com you know, a question that someone asked that you don't know the answer to or you can just approach it in a more calm, cool, calm, collected kind of way. Yeah, it's like that rule of like leave your purchasing decision for 24 or 48 hours or whatever and if you still want yeah. that time, you can go buy it and also... Yeah especially when we're dealing with family farmers. Sometimes yeah. we don't always see eye to eye with one decision. Um, and maybe yeah. breath work might be the key between good relationships, good um, communication. As yeah. Well. I have to take a few breaths sometimes when I'm trying to, you know, get something across with my husband and I'm like, oh, just take a moment. Otherwise you're going to say something you're going to regret here. But <laughs> Absolutely. And you're not, dissimilar to anyone out there as well we all go through those sort of times those periods each week or whatever i used to say to mum mum always used to have half an hour of being angry at, at us each week yeah. uh, <laughs> she, she practices mindfulness now through through her work as well but yeah for yourself, how important is movement within the farming community you said like your husband comes off the tractor um just that stretch out how can we sort of start to integrate this? Not like actually taking the time out. There's a word for it. I can't remember what it is, but it's like when you walk to work and sort of like driving the car or whatever, it's like just that natural progression of doing exercise. How and what's the best way to get started? Um, I think probably just awareness is the first thing. Like I know that we're always in a rush and always busy, but, you know, where um, my husband and I live, um, our in our compound like where the houses and everything are so our um, in-laws live about 150 meters away so you know just little things and he's like oh we'll just get on the buggy and we'll go over and I'm like let's just walk 
Like, let's yes. just walk, yeah, yeah. you know? So I think just little things like that. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll just walk. I'm like, yeah. But that's just the habit. Like, you just get in the buggy and you fang over there and, you know, go and see them. But so it's just little things like that. So um, I think it is challenging for the blokes because yeah. it is always so go, 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 go. But re- And this is like probably one of the best moments ever. Haim rang me, my husband rang me one day and he was lugging around on the tractor all day and we've got an old Steiger and it's pretty old and chunky and it was rough and he was disking and um, he said, oh, God, my back's so sore. I just did a few little cat cows on the tractor, like just to loosen up. And I was like, my work here is done. My work here is done. So you know, if you get out and you have a lunch break or you get into the vehicle to go to a different paddock or something like just even leaning over the wheel with your arms and just stretching out your back or taking that, you know, breath, you know, having a few breathing exercises or roll your shoulders back. Like when you're in the tractor and you're getting stiff, like I think just like having that awareness and just actually taking, um, you know, tiny little steps in your daily life like I'm all about adding in little bits gradually rather than have to do a one hour flow today like I'd much prefer the blokes out there to do those few little shoulder rolls in the track to get out every couple of hours and you know put your arms up on the tractor wheel and just do some spinal rolls and stuff like you know and and then um yeah, I think I think also we have our yoga mats. Um, you know, I sneakily place them in the living area so that um, when you know, because Haim's buggered, like, and all the all you guys are all buggered, like it's it's hard hard work. Oh, yeah, and you know, you'll be right. Ten minutes. Yeah, I know, I know. Come on, that's what I'm exactly exactly what I'm like. I'm pushy. Um, so I I said I I have it there visibly. So I'm like, okay, we'll just roll out the yoga mats now, like. 10 minutes, five minutes, like it doesn't, it doesn't have, and I think once in your mind you change the perception or, you know, what you think you need to be doing to like in quote live healthy or to be moving and all of that kind of stuff. I think five minutes is great. If that's what you can do, if you can do five minutes every night, like it's better than a lot of other people are doing. And then, you know, then you might do seven minutes and then 10 minutes and, you know, and I just think, um, yeah, little bits um, in your everyday life is better than nothing. And I'm all about something's better than nothing. Probably like what you just said before, you have the mats in the living room just to make it as easy as possible. You don't want to go and get the mat from the shed every time that you want to do a workout or something or put the dumbbells um, in the right spot for yourself in the morning. Um, Yeah. However you can do it. I like I try to take a page out of my dog's book because when they get up every time they stretch and you'd be mm. like, like once a month as a farmer normally. Um, but like you feel so much better and relieved after stretching and you're not so sore. Like yeah, especially like for the hard labor, like landmarking, I do a yeah. bit of stretch before and after there because like it's quite noticeable in the end. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And for yourself, what, you, you're running a challenge now. I've actually seen a few mates. Um, one at least has been on the podcast before that she's running through as well, and she's ticking off the days. Tell us a little cool. bit about that challenge. Um, so basically, it is the get your groove back challenge. So after the um, after the um, Christmas and New Year period, I feel like it can be a little bit blurry um, for a lot of us. And also like harvest was late this year. It was stop, start, stop, start, you know, so everything was just pushed back. So I, I just wanted to allow my community all in the name to get your groove back, get back into some sort of routine. Most people are back at work or school or not that, you know, the farmers um, ever had a break. Um, So yeah, basically the challenge is a 21-day challenge mixture between yoga, Pilates, and there is one six-minute meditation a week. So you just sneak in that little bit of mindfulness in there. Um, so, yeah, 21 days of movement. And, yeah, I just want people to get moving again, feel groovy. I just want the vibes to be high. And I think also 
the whole point of the get your groove it back challenge is that it doesn't have to be fancy. You roll out your mat. We're doing it as a community. So we're all inspiring each other. We've got a private Facebook um, page. So I put, um, obviously I put like a lot on my normal, um, you know, socials and stuff as well, but I put a little bit of other stuff just to like encourage and, you know, a few more extra little tips in the Facebook group, um, you know, just to really keep everyone connected. And that's kind of um, the Facebook group also allows that connection piece. So, you know, for example, we have a weekly personal goal for the challenge. So I do a little video and I say, you don't have to do anything hectic. It's just one little thing for this week that you want to have as your little goal. So for some people, the challenge is their personal goal to get on the mat every single day and do that. For other people, it's to make sure that their lawn doesn't die in the middle of summer. For other people, it is, you know, um, going for a walk after dinner with their partner or, you know, and so there's, it's honestly just so cool. Like, you know, and that like connection piece, like connecting all of these women and men from everywhere in Australia and we're all connecting together and sharing our little wins and personal goals and, you know, it's, it's um, and that's what I think, yes, moving your body is so important but also that connection piece is just as important for me as moving your body because, as we've said before, like living in the bush can be isolating at times. So I want to connect that movement and the connectivity you know, um, and not feeling isolated, um, connecting, connecting that all together. So, yeah. And it's fun. Like uh, it's, um, yeah, everyone's, everyone's getting into it. So, um, I think I probably am quote, like maybe not your standard, um, yoga, um, or well, Pilates is a bit more out there, but I, I just want to make it like accessible to everyone and fun and, you know, I don't want it to be in quote woo woo. Um, I just want people to move and stretch and feel the burn and, you know, really connect together like as a bush community, like all, all bush communities do connect. Like I think that's, um, yeah, what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's certainly needed within the farming agricultural community. And there's people in farming that live in the city too. So like that's not left out for them as well. Um, yeah. And you also got a couple of global clients there. Good to see that that's growing. And how did you actually snag them? Um, well, there's one. Um, I've got a yeah, I've got a couple. So a few, a few. So my cousin, she lives in London. So that's a bit of a um family token one. But there's another girl in the UK. She spent quite a bit of time in Australia. Somehow on social media, it's an incredible platform really it blows my mind every day um so yeah through her friends that are doing the challenge um yeah she's jumped on board so yeah that was a real pinch me moment when I'm like oh my god I'm just here out at Carathal doing my thing and there is someone all across the other side of the world like joining in like that's just a pretty awesome pretty cool feeling so um and again like she's not on the land she's somewhere in the city and somehow feeling a part of our bush community so you know, there's something special about it. Um, and then uh, there's a few people also on holidays at the moment, half their luck. Um, yep. So, yeah, another girl is in Europe and another woman is in Bangkok for work. So, um, yeah, they're tuning keeping, in from there. Going. Pardon? Still keeping the stretch going from over there. Still the keeping the stretch going. So it's, um, yeah, really... Um, really cool so yeah from Winton in Queensland to Bangkok we've got it we've got someone from everywhere <laughs> Absolutely. So, from this episode Em what would you like the farmers and the ag community to take if they can take one thing away from what you do and what you do for the community what would that be and how to get sort of started um I think probably the first thing is not to be scared of it and uh, I think that's definitely um it's not only for women and uh, I think maybe just after listening to this, maybe you might just think twice when you are on that tractor or lifting those lambs, like just to maybe, you know, 
do those few rolls back in your shoulders, maybe put your mat out in the living room or, you know, at least get it out of the shed. It might be a good start. Um, so I just think um, small steps, small steps. So, you know, as we said before, like, as I said before with the buggy, like if there's that one thing that you can do, if you've got the time, like instead of driving there, like maybe walk there if it's close or, you know, um, just allow, allow you, give yourself permission to just give it a crack because at the end of the day, you can only give it a crack. And if you don't like it, well, that's fine. But you won't know unless you give it a try. Absolutely. Well, um, we'll wrap it up there. Thanks so much for being our little health kick for 2023 to get us all moving in that movement. Even if it's Pilates, you can do it in ruggers, footy shorts. and Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. I've loved, loved chatting with you today. Amazing. So for anyone looking to get a hold of you, where can we find you? Um, so Instagram or Facebook, so both um, at Saltbush Stretch yep. and my website is also Saltbush Stretch as well. So yeah, would love to see a few more blokes brave enough to give it a whirl. Amazing. I'll put everything in the show notes for anyone looking to stretch it out. They can do so. Awesome. Thanks so much. This Farms Advice episode does not stop here. Come and join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. And even join our Facebook group. Go to farmsadvice.com.au for more on this episode and spread the hashtag Farms Advice to your mates. If you can leave a review on Apple or Spotify, that will let other farmers find us too. But until then, see you next Tuesday. In the spirit of reconciliation, the Farm Size podcast acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to their elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander people today.